Hi everybody, my name is Cameron and today we'll be looking at the nervous system, specifically the reflex arc, the brain and the eyes. So the nervous system is also going to be a link to homeostasis. Okay, most of the nerves in our body are there to try to keep the internal environment of our bodies as stable as possible, regardless of any external or internal changes. So, when it comes to the nervous system, it's broken down into three main parts. Okay, the receptors, which are going to detect a stimulation. Okay, this can be from outside of the body or inside of the body. These receptors are then going to send a signal to the coordination center. Now, the coordination center is going to be the place where this information is processed and another response signal is sent out. This response signal is then sent to the effector. Now, the effector is the tissue or the organ that is going to respond to that initial stimuli to try to keep the internal environment of our bodies as stable as possible. So let's look at that three-step process in a little more detail. We call it the reflex arc. Now, the reflex arc is mainly made up of neurons. Neurons are the cells that are adapted and specialized to perform the function of sending these signals and impulses. Now, there are three different types. Okay, so initially there is the stimulus. Okay, this is the change in the external or internal environment. A lot of the times they like to use the example of touching a flame. Okay, but this could also be the the change in sugar levels within your blood. So these external stimuluses or internal stimuluses okay, are picked up by receptors. Okay. Now these receptors are linked to a sensory neuron. These sensory neurons are going to send an impulse to the coordination center through relay neurons. Once this signal is processed, a response signal is sent out from the relay neurons to the motor neurons. Now, motor neurons are going to be connected to an effector. The effector could be a muscle that causes your finger to be pulled away from the flame, or it could be an effector on the pancreas to release more insulin. So here's just a diagram to summarize the reflex arc. So initially we have the stimulus. The stimulus is picked up by receptors. The receptors are going to be linked to these sensory neurons. The sensory neurons are going to send the signal to the central nervous system. This could be the brain or the spinal column. The central nervous system is then going to send these signals using the relay neuron to the motor neurons which are going to then stimulate the effector. So let's look at the central nervous system in a bit more detail. Okay, the brain. It's made up of the cerebral cortex, which houses your consciousness, your intelligence, your memory and your language. Okay, uh, when it comes to how much damage the brain can take, the cerebral cortex is probably the part that can take the most damage without causing major issues. Okay, so you might have a bit of short-term memory loss or you might have a bit of uh, smaller issues. Okay, is what I'm saying. People have lost large chunks of their cerebral cortex but still able to function. Now, when it comes to the cerebellum, this is something that has to be protected a bit more, which is why it's found at the back of the head, okay, and more closer to the center. This controls muscle activity as well as balance. Our medulla is going to be found pretty centrally in the brain because if this takes any damage, it could stop your heart from beating or affect your unconscious activities, okay, such as gut movement or breathing. Um, it's obviously very difficult to treat the brain because of all these small parts that, if damaged, can lead to some very severe long-term effects, okay? Um, it's also very delicate and you have to get through the skull to get to the brain. So a lot of these surgeries are incredibly invasive. 
another crucial part to the nervous system that you will have to know is the eye. Okay, so the eye is made up of various parts that allow us to perceive light and transform it into an image for our brain to make sense of, which is pretty amazing. So it starts with the cornea. Now the cornea is a transparent layer over the front of the eye. Okay, it allows light through and also refracts it. So refracting means to change the direction of light. After that, the light will enter the pupil. Now the pupil is this dark spot in the middle of your eye. Okay, this pupil is then going to be controlled. The size of the pupil is going to be controlled by something called the iris. Okay, this is the colorful part of our eye. The iris is a muscle that will contract when there is a lot of light. Okay, um, so the rod receptor cells in the back of our eye will tell us how much light we're getting. If we're getting too much, the iris is going to close. Okay, it's going to constrict. But if it is not getting enough light, if we would like to get more light, then it is going to dilate. It's going to get bigger. Okay, so that's controlled by the iris. So after it enters going through the cornea into the pupil, it is going to hit the lens. Now the lens is what focuses an image. If you want to look close up, the image in the background is going to be blurred because your lens hasn't shaped itself to focus on that background image. Same thing if you were to look far, the images close up are going to be blurred. Okay. Now when it comes to people that struggle to see, okay, we are either short-sighted or far-sighted. Short-sighted is myopia. This is when the light is focused ahead of the retina. And hyperopia is when the light is focused beyond the retina. Okay, now, what is the retina, you may ask? The retina is a layer of sensitive light receptors that are found in the back of the eye. Okay, so our cone cells, we call them. There's three cone cells. Okay. These three cone cells are going to be picking up the light that comes in through the lens. Okay. The job of the lens is to focus it perfectly on the retina so that we can get as clear as an image as possible. Now these cone cells are then going to stimulate the optic nerve which is at the very back of the eye. This optic nerve is going to send impulses to the brain which will then make sense of these impulses and make a picture for us to see. Okay. Now, when it comes to the other parts of the eye that do not have direct contact, I guess you can say, with light, it's made up of the sclera. Now, the sclera is the white layer around our eye. Okay, it's there to protect the inner workings of the eye, so it's very tough when it comes to eyes. Okay eye components, we would say the sclera is kind of tough, it's kind of strong, okay, to protect the lens and to also protect the ciliary muscles. Now the ciliary muscles are what are going to contract or relax to allow our lens to focus on far away objects or close up objects. So here's just a little diagram that I have drawn to help us perceive what we are talking about here. So light is going to go firstly through the cornea. It is then going to enter the pupil, which is controlled by the iris. After it enters the pupil, it's going to be refracted by the lens. The lens is going to be controlled by the ciliary muscles. After this light is focused to a certain point on the retina, the color cones are going to be stimulated and they're going to send impulses through the optic nerve to the brain. Now, how lenses work, especially these convex lenses, okay, so all the lenses, all your contact lenses, glasses, are all convex lenses, okay. Now, when light is focused by them onto a certain point and coming back out, it is going to be inverted. So everything that we see is actually inverted in our eyes, but our brain has adapted to telling us, no, it's actually the right way up, and it flips the image for us in our brain. Okay. 
So how exactly does the shape of the lens affect whether or not we are focusing on an object closer or further away from us? Okay, so to focus on an object that is nearby, our lens is going to need to get a bit wider to bring that image a bit further out for our retina. It makes sense because when you are seeing... Okay, so let me just carry on. Um, this is controlled by the ciliary muscles. So the ciliary muscles are going to contract, okay, to make the lens fatter, to make it wider, to bring that image further out so that the retina can respond to it and focus on that object, okay? So this makes sense because when you are getting old, if you go show your parents a meme on your phone or something like that, you say, look here, mom, and mom goes, and puts it away and tries to focus on it like that. Now, why is this? Because as you get older, your ciliary muscles are going to get tired. They're not going to be able to contract as much, and therefore, you're not going to be able to focus on something that's close up because they can't contract enough. So you're going to have to bring the image as far as you can away from your face to a point where the ciliary muscles can f move the lens to focus that object. Okay. Now, if something's far away, your ciliary muscles are going to relax. When they relax, your lens is going to get more narrow and it's going to push that image a bit further into your eye so that your retina can make sense of it. Okay. So, my name is Cameron. This has been The Nervous System and I will see you in the next lesson.